and welcome back to my garage. Today we're working on the Corolla again. It has been a while to, well, to be honest. It's not that I did nothing on the car, it's just that I have um, split up the project in some multiple parts and I'm working on them, uh, well, at the same time. So, um, the problem is, I did not finish any of it yet. So I'm going through it with you, what I'm working on right now. Um, well, as you have seen, I have uh, tacked the boxes in to its place. I'm not going to weld them up just yet, because I think it's in the right place, but if it isn't, then it's now more or less easier to, well, fix my problem. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap <coughs> between here, but that is something I yeah, calculated in there. I don't want to say that, but I can uh, make a little bit of a plate and make it look uh, all nice again, so I'm not too worried at, about that. Uh, the nicest thing is, is that it's completely parallel and of course, well, it is just in its place where I want to have it. What I'm going to do now is uh, I have to put the axle back and measure the the arms or links or how do you want to call those things. I did order some parts for it, but I wanted to show them a colleague on my work and I of course did that, but I forget to bring them home. So I cannot get any further uh, then, well, putting the axle in its place and maybe take some measurements. So that sucks a little bit. But first I'm going to show you where I'm also working on for the Corolla. So I think it's a, it's a nice extra thing. The only problem is, of course, it is something I already tackled and now <laughs> I'm doing it again because reasons. So, let's have a look. As you can see, this is the front strut. There is nothing new there. Um, but the keen eye of you probably noticed that there is now a vented rotor on there. Yes, I changed the brake system again. I had a car in my shop and I looked at the brakes and I thought those are small, well, small package of brakes because I still wanted to use, of course, my 13 inch uh, 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 rims that I have. So, just out of curiosity, I just took my rim and put it on the car. The rim had clearance, just all the way around it had clearance. So, I thought, if it fits right, so I probably can adapt it to the car and well as you can see that is what I did of course this is just only uh, well the the saddle but it does fit it is spinning freely uh, just fits nicely of course I have don't have the caliper on it right now but there's more than enough clearance uh, for it I will try to get the caliper also on it so there's just now too much weight on it and the brackets are, well, I made them out of uh, plastic or 3D printed. It's just so awesome. But as you can see, it is still free. It's not by a very big margin, maybe half a centimeter, but it is free. But the same bracket can be used with a little bit larger rotor. But then you, of course, you have to go with 13s. And even if you want any bigger, the car where this is a well a donor of came with big Brembos, so it's even possible to install Brembos on it. This is where I came up with. It is a two-piece adapter, as you can see, the white piece and the black piece. These are all old tests pieces. And I have a, a couple of them, like a, a couple. 
some things were just wrong prints, uh, wrong things by me. But as you can see, it just slides over here and it is held in place with four bolts where normally the drum brake is connected to or uh, well the, the old disc brake plate. This thing is normally of course bolted in there like so or like so in this case. I made it a two piece for a reason. I wanted to well make them in house and this is a shape it is a bit complicated but I could make it in house. What I could do is send it off to a shop to well uh, CNC it and then I could make it out of one piece and that is also a thing I'm still thinking about doing it but that is r really expensive. I think if I make two of those so for the left and the right side I would have to pay well 200 250 euros yeah at least 250 euros for a pair of well these brackets so it is a lot of money and uh, for 250 euros I can do well a lot of other things so but then again I could remodel it so it would fit on the left side and on the right side so it's a universal directions how do you want to call it so then the fabrication cost will go down but still again I have two pieces so this is of course not the only piece uh, that's needed of these two there is also a back plate right here that sandwiched the well the rotor between well the original uh, hub and it looks something like this but then uh, of course not broken this is one of those test pieces this is a really flimsy one just for testing purposes as you can see it's almost paper thin so yeah this took a lot of time also from well the rear uh, suspension what i learned here the 3d modeling and stuff like that and uh, of course how the 3d printer works um, I can use to make the pushrod suspension at the back at least to well I can model it completely and uh, test fit it all maybe it takes me a little bit more time than do it with cardboard but it will much more be much more precise and I have the complete models and of course if I decided to replicate it on my other cars because I have uh, a couple of more of these cars then yeah it, it, it's just so much easier I just have a, 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 a well, push of a button and I can make it for me the design for this is done but I'm also working on a set for the back and probably I have now solid rotors but I also think I found a way to get a vented rotors on the back so yeah I'm still working on that but things like this I really like I, I really like making stuff like this also I'm working on two other videos and it will be a video series and uh, I'm not going to hang you for, for I cannot tell you what it is right now because I'm going to tell you what it is right now because it's I don't want to say flopped but it's just not what I expected to be and one is maybe you have seen it in the uh, in other videos but there is a Alpha 75 it's uh, from a friend of mine Kevin and I help him to get that car on the road again and we're working on that but uh, it is a long process so uh, you will get some videos of that but it is it is a process for me because I'm going to um, montage it differently I, I want to make it a little bit more um, yeah how, how do you call it, it 
more entertaining is that it i don't know but i want to make it a little bit different and also i'm working on maybe you have seen that car also on the suzuki alto i want to also make a big uh, series out of it and chop it into pieces and well an evenly upload and that also did not go like i wanted to be so i'm really annoyed by that I don't say I want to say I'm stuck with that thing, but in my brain I'm stuck with uh, how I want to capture it all. So I really have to get myself together and work on that. I want to make my videos better. And I have the feeling that my equipment right now is limiting my, uh, well, I don't want to say my creative uh, things. It is just uh, light, lightning, <laughs> lightning. Uh, the way it's lit uh, is a problem, uh, even right now. Uh, I have a lot of light around me, but for some reasons, of course I'm using cheap camcorders and I know that they're not perfect for low light. And uh, so I want some decent cameras. Fortunately, uh, my videos are going pretty well. My ch the, the channel is going pretty well and every everybody that subscribe to the channel um, I'm really thankful for that I know that of course that I have almost 3000 subscribers at this point uh, I know that not everyone is watching my videos like and someone that subscribes to my channel not all of them not all the uh, are watching all my videos and that is absolutely just fine it's just the subscription is for me um, something like I really appreciate what you do and I grind you the keys to well expand your channel and that is just mind-blowing for me it's So we're now two weeks later and I've got those heim joints or rose joints or rod ends, just how to, you want to call it. It's just called different in different parts of the world. So, but these things, including the welding bone that just fits right into the tube, I can weld them and uh, we have an adjustable uh, system. I don't know for sure if I'm going to use the heim joints itself or I'm going to le leave them off and weld a bushing onto it. Um, I don't know for sure yet. Uh, I don't have to decide also yet because I can fit it just into its place and if I want to do it anyways I can well, do it. Uh, the problem is, if I'm going to use these heim joints, I have to uh, make some spacer so it fits right here. Because, of, uh, like you know, I have designed a system with bushings. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the bar where the center is. Then at least we know that, well, from center to center what the uh, tubes has to be. Also, I'm going, of course, just measure it with uh, a measuring tape and just to double check if everything is uh, in the right spot. I measured it wrong. I measured it from the right side of the hole to the left side of the hole. So it's uh, one centimeter short. So it is 48 instead of 47. So let's double check. And indeed it is 48. Now that we know that, yeah, it's left hand thread. So 
Uh, so now that we know that the center of each hole has to be 48 centimeters, of course we need to determine the adjustment we're going to make. And there is a rule of thumb, and that is if it's everything is working okay, is that of course you cannot adjust it like so. Uh, one or two frets at the uh, at the end, so we don't have this much adjustment. We cannot say that the adjustment is three centimeters, because well, it's just held in place with just one or two frets, so it's not going to be a very very sturdy um, construction. So a rule of thumb is is that you at least insert the thickness of the well, the shaft of the, the heim joint into the hole. So I believe these are M12s. So let's see. These are indeed M12s. So we at least have to be sure that it's insert 12 millimeters into the hole. Let's say about something like, like this. So now we can at least measure the adjustment we have and that's about a little bit more of two centimeters so if we calculate two centimeters then we are well golden but because we have two heim joints on each arm uh, we have four centimeters of adjustment so I'm going to set them up in the center so we have about one centimeter something like this and now I can measure the difference is six and a half so so it is six and a half plus six and a half that is 13 so 48 minus 13 that we have to cut off or that has to be our tube length. into its place. Uh, as you can see it's just a nice fit and I already chamfered the edges on the lathe so I get a good penetration uh, with the weld. Of course I'm not going to weld it fully yet just in case if I for some reason off by too much I can well cut them off, cut some new pieces and uh, that's just one of the chances you have when you are fabricating stuff that 
something isn't going to work out as planned, even though I think I am well measuring everything as good as I can. There is always room for error, especially when you do it yourself. But uh, I have to be sure that I use a left-handed thread and a right-handed thread on one bar. So I can just use it as a turnbuckle. So I just have to undo the nuts and then I can use it just by, or I can lengthen it by turning one way or shorten it by turning the, the other way, just like a turnbuckle. And uh, yeah, nothing special. But of course, first we need to clean up the edges and uh, yeah, then it's up to welding. I should have cleaned them when they were in the lathe. But, oh well. bars are done. I am considering putting a big nut somewhere here in the middle but of course it has to be a pretty big nut so you can make adjustments more easily especially when stuff is getting stuck over the years but I don't have nuts that big. Yeah you make the joke. So I have to look into that also but for now uh, let's put them on the car and well, I think this video is done then. Even though I don't have the right bolts, but uh, I will order them of course. And as you can see if I turn them, the axle is going backwards or forwards, it is just what I want. Of course it isn't in there yet, but we're a step closer to uh, be done. At least with the four link. As you can see, the pumpkin is uh, hanging freely when we turn this, it's going up and down. Of course, I still need the right bolts. Now, of course, the forward and backwards motion we have done, but as you can see, Side to side is, uh, well, just a little bit sketchy. Basically there are, for me now, two solutions. The Panard Bar or Watts Link. Um, Panard Bar is not going to happen because the Watts Link is superior and because I have to fabricate it anyway, well, why not uh, try to make a Watts Link? And that is all I'm going to show you in this video. Like I said before, basically the four link is now done. Now we're going to make the watts link. And after we made the watts link, we are going to do the suspension. And as you guys know, I want to make a counter lever or a push rod suspension. It's just how do you want to call it? Uh, also, I am working on, well, the front brakes you already seen. But I'm also working on a 
uh, rear brake, disc brake uh, conversion. And I have two options, or at least I'm looking into two options. One is solid and one is vented. Uh, the vented one will be, of course, not something you need to have, but it is cool to just figure it out if I can make it fit or not. The solid one, I pretty much figured it out how to do it. Um, it definitely isn't going to be a bolt-on solution. Uh, the problem is that the axles that going in. Uh, the problem is that the axle. This is a K30 axle. As you can see, it isn't going to fit. The problem is this is rich. That's sitting right here has to come off. So yeah, it is not going to be a, well, bolt on. This is of course a KA10, but it's a KA30 Excel. If there is really a demand for it, then I uh, want to make it for the KA10 also. It sh should be not that complicated to do. The vented one, I'm just looking into it. I think I found a suitable caliper for it, but uh, I have to track one down first and then try it of course. But yeah, that's it for today's video and hopefully the next update will be a lot sooner than later. A lot of things is happening in my life and as you know, YouTube is for me a way of relaxing and not uh, a way of work. So. Please be patient. If you have any questions, of course, you can contact me. It is what it is. And it comes when it comes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video or at least learned something from it. If you have a question, please ask. And if you want to follow me around, so you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, this is the caliper. Man.